trouble, and I got them too. There isn't anything we wouldn't do for you. We stick together, see it through. So a stranger can live. Can you take what you need? You take less than you give. Could you close every day without the glory and fame? Hold your head high When no one knows your name That's how legends are made At least that's what they say Maybe I should have watched that uh, first before today, but uh, I don't care who you are, it's tough to, uh, to see that and, and talk, so I'll do my best, as will everyone else. My name is Sergeant Steve Worley, and I'm the commander of the K-9 unit. I'd like to thank everyone here for coming to honor Police Service Dog Kobus and his handler, Matt McKinney, and family. I'd also like to take the time to thank the Christ Community Church and staff for being so gracious to allow us to utilize their church for this uh, memorial service. It's very much appreciated. Seated on the stage with me <clears throat> is Mayor Gene Stother, Omaha Police Chief Todd Schmatter, and Police Sergeant Aaron Hansen. Sergeant Aaron Hansen is currently assigned to the gang unit and is a former OPD canine handler, canine handler. At this time, I'd like to ask Mayor Stother to please come to the podium to speak. Chief Schmatter, Officer McKinney, and all of the Omaha police officers and your families, I share your sadness today. I join so many to share my sympathy for Cobus, the family that loves him, and the officers who trained him. Cobus was a hero. He did the job that you all trained him to do. Like the officers he worked with, Cobus put himself in harm's way every time he was needed. And he was needed Saturday to protect the officers who work for more than 24 hours to end a dangerous standoff. He was needed to protect the families in the neighborhood, and he did his job to protect and serve, and he helped his fellow officers make it home that day. Officer McKinney, Cobus was your partner, and he was your family's pet, and I know he was loved, and I know he will be missed. Our community supports Blue. That's a simple yet so important message. It shows we all care about public safety, and when we lose a member of our police team, we all mourn together. Once again, Omaha stands out as a compassionate community, and it is with gratitude and community pride that we remember Cobus. Until Saturday, we didn't know him, but we all know him now, and we will never forget his service and his sacrifice. circumstances that brought us here today, but I'm 
to be truthful, I love to be around my colleagues. I like to see my colleagues from other states and other jurisdictions and those that work for the Omaha Police Department gather. It's, it's just a good feeling for me. Mayor Stother, thank you for supporting the Omaha Police Department. The mayor and I talk almost every day. Public safety is, is such a concern for both of us. We talk every day. When I told her about COBUS, she was devastated and had one request of me. She said, hey, have this ceremony before Friday so that she could attend. She's leaving town tomorrow. That's how bad she wanted to be at this today. My condolence to Officer McKinney and your family. Matt and I have talked privately. He knows how I feel and he knows, and I know that this has been tough on him and his family, especially his kids, because Cobas became part of his family. Officer McKinney is the consummate professional. He knew the dangers our canines were faced in order to protect lives. Cobus died in order to protect human life, and I want the public to know the Omaha Police Department's canine unit, under the solid direction of Sergeant Steve Worley, is out there every day, under the radar, out of the public's view, protecting society, protecting fellow officers, and making the city a hard target for drug trafficking and gun trafficking in the city of Omaha. I want to touch on the 25-hour standoff that ultimately led us here today because it speaks volumes about the discipline and professionalism of law enforcement. It's not my intent to bring up raw emotions, but I want the public to know how coordinated and how disciplined the agencies that represent Omaha and Douglas County are. I'll start by personally commending all the Douglas County Sheriff's deputies and all the officers that worked this very dangerous standoff. The overall command of the incident, in my eyes, was absolutely stellar. Captain Eric Sellers, Captain Steve Glant, Douglas County Sheriff's Department, assisted by Lieutenant Jay Levitt of our emergency response unit, all our SWAT team sergeants, all the SWAT team members of both agencies, my utmost respect for what you do. On this occasion, the suspect fired a weapon at deputies. He shot at them where they're trying to serve a court-authorized warrant. They're doing their job. The suspect then barricades himself in the house and refuses communication this entire time, refuses it for hours. He was impervious to several deployments of gas, several deployments, numerous explosive breaches were done on the house. Subject is impervious to those as well. The suspect had no heat and he was exposed to water that had been pouring into his house for eight hours. It was a tactic that was used to try to get him to come out safely and peacefully. Law enforcement had a visual on our suspect. We could see him. You know, I can't get into everything as to how, but we could see the movements that he was making. So many, many, many hours after everything that I just said, and includes watching him on camera pace back and forth with firearms in his hand. The suspect decides to lay on the floor and he goes motionless. He motionless for 45 minutes. Okay, so now the commanders on, on the scene, they have a decision to make. You have a suspect in there, they don't know if he's dying of hyperthermia, they don't know if he's committed suicide or has some other medical ailment, but he hasn't moved for 45 minutes. So the decision is to made to create a loud explosion to see if he'll flinch. That explosion rocked the house, he didn't move. At that point, the commanders at the scene make a decision. Do we send human law enforcement in, knowing that he's already fired upon them, but we need to check on this individual's well-being. We need to see if he's alive at this point and try to help him if he is. Or do we send in a highly trained canine officer who happens to be a veteran of these apprehensions and has been through the pace as many times over. The proper decision was made to send in Cobus, and sadly, Cobus was shot entering the house and died at the scene. The suspect ultimately surrendered, but I bring this up to give the, the sobering point that Cobus not only died to protect law enforcement, but he, he died to save all lives there, and that includes the suspect. Because had human law enforcement entered that scene, they would have been the recipient of gunfire, subjected themselves to death or serious injury. 
and no doubt requiring them to return fire. In the end, the suspect surrenders. And in a, in a dramatic scene, I, I wish I was there, but I, on a lot of these scenarios, it's, it's important that I just receive briefings and I trust my commander so explicitly. And in every review of this incident, I, I'm just telling you, is, is the command and control and the operation of this was stellar. Cobus was wrapped in an American flag at the scene. Humane Society even arrived with a wrapped flag. That was a nice touch. So I'm going I'm to close by saying to the Douglas County Sheriff's Department, I will partner with your agency any day of the week. To our Omaha Police Department SWAT team and our, and our canine unit, you repeatedly perform with distinction in this city and without any desired recognition, but I recognize you today. So for all the work you do for our community, to all the law enforcement here today, I want to thank you. And once again, Matt, you have my condolences. I am uh, Sergeant Aaron Hansen. Uh, I was on the K-9 unit for 14 years. Gives me a little bit of unique perspective into, uh, into what they do and what we ask these dogs to do to keep our community safe. Uh, it was tough for me uh, when I heard about what happened to Cobus. I have a different assignment and my heart was with my old crew and I could just imagine what they were going through. Uh, as a result of that, uh, parlaying my experience and, and trying to soften the blow to the unit, to Matt and his family, I uh, wrote a poem, which I think shocked a lot of people that, that I would write a poem. <laughs> and unfortunately, uh, because I wrote that poem, I was asked by my old crew to not only read a canine prayer, uh, but also to read that poem. A um, little background. These police service dogs mean a lot to our community. And I know that the community at large would have a very hard time truly understanding how much these police service dogs mean to our officers. They rely on them to go in ahead and face the danger. And I think officers at large would have a hard time understanding what these police service dogs mean to their handlers, the bond and relationship they have. But there's one other group, and this is why uh, I wrote this poem. Uh, <clears throat> the, uh, the families, the children, the loved ones who rely on these dogs to bring those handlers home. <clears throat> the canine prayer. I will lay down my life for you and expect nothing in but love in return. I protect all officers with my life and would gladly take a bullet in their place. I am sent in to find lost children and fugitives on the run. I find drugs and weapons and even bombs. I am the first sent in and often the last to leave. I am the nose and ears of the officers. I protect and serve them. I would die for any and all officers I only ask for your love and care. <clears throat> I have never read this out loud yet, and I'm going to give it a try. I wag my tail, a tribute to OPD Police Service Dog Cobus. The ride is fast, the sirens wail. As cars fly past, I wag my tail. We're finally here, 
I see the lights, I have no fear, I'm wired tight. My partner on edge, I know him well, will serve our pledge, but blue stress I smell. We approach the door, this home I'll comb, it's my solemn chore, my team will go home. My partner shouts, there's no retort, but I have no doubts, I'll enter the fort. I pick up the scent, my nose he can't foil. Into the darkness I went, smell of gas, anger, fear, gun oil. I'm getting warmer, I found my man, I round the corner, it hits the fan. The shots ring out, but I charge ahead, my partner shouts, but for this fight, I was bred. The fight is on, but the round's too many. I did not run of bravery, I had plenty. My legs give out, to the floor I fall. I was the scout, I gave my all. My team moves back, I'm glad they're safe. I took the attack, so my partners, he could not strafe. The room's going dark. I never put on the skids because my bite is worse than my bark and my partner must see his kids. My life was broad. I did not fail. As I see God, I wag my tail. Thank you, Aaron. I wanted to talk a little bit <clears throat> about Cobus and the selection of Cobus. Can you talk, Matt? Good. Officer uh, Matt McKinney would like to come up and say a few words. We weren't sure if he'd be able to, but he will. I'm going to have to talk to the coordinator to place me behind Aaron Hansen in this uh, pecking order here. <laughs> Uh, for those of you who know me, um, you know that I'm a behind the scenes kind of guy. I don't like to be up in front, front and center. So I'm going to try and get through as much as I can. Um, I might skip some things. Um, but uh, first of all, um, I'd like to thank the community. Uh, you guys have been fantastic. Every, every time I open up my computer or turn on my phone, there's something new and it's overwhelming. And Greatly appreciated. Uh, I'd like to thank Christ Community Church uh, for donating this place. It's fantastic. Um, the Mayor, Chief Smarter, um, Steve Worley, Aaron Hansen, thank you. Um, I'd also like to thank the men and women in, on the blue line. Um, those are the ones that Cobus fell for, and he's the one that work, he works for. Um, I also want to give a special thank you to uh, Officer Levy and Sergeant Worley, who showed up to scene that night. Um, I got a couple stories here. I don't know if I'm going to read them. Let me see. Hold on. Give me a second here. Um... As some of you know, uh, Cobus was preparing for retirement. Um, the last five weeks, I've been training up a new dog. Once that new dog was um, certified, Cobus was going to be in retirement. So I wasn't taking him to work every day. Um, so in prep for retirement, Cobus was not in agreement. Uh, for example, I was getting ready for a call. He would hear my boots hit the floor. Um, Cobus always stayed in the basement. 
for some reason, he knew the different sounds that my Harley boots made and my work boots. Um, I don't know why. Um, when his work boots, he was whining, whimpering, barking, could hear his tail hitting the door, ready to work. When I'd finally open up that basement door, um, I'd have to get out of the way because he would mow me over. Um, once he was in the cruiser, he was home. He was ready to work every day. I'm really going to miss this. Um, let's see, I got one more. I don't think I'm going to read that one. <laughs> so, in closing, uh, Cobus embodies a sheepdog image all officers aspire to achieve. Thank you.